Welcome to your market brief for the week of May 18th. A brutal stretch for employment in America continues amid the coronavirus pandemic. Following the latest unemployment claims report, the U.S. has now lost over 36 million jobs in the last two months. Additionally, the Fed's balance sheet has hit nearly $7 trillion. To help you prepare for the week ahead, let's check in with Ben Levison, Barron's deputy editor, for the big story he's focused on right now. What I'm really paying attention to now is what's going on between the U.S. and China. We knew that there was this trade war going on. That much was obvious. That maybe seemed to be pulling back a little bit. And now we also have this tech uh, cold war going on, something we've been writing about in Barron's for a while. Something else happened last week when the Trump administration started taking steps to keep what's really the largest federal 401k plan from investing in Chinese stocks. This is something that it was supposed to be allowed to do soon, but might not be allowed to at all. And this really could mark the moment that we start having a third front in this uh, Cold War between the United States and China, and that would be over capital. There are people who would not be surprised to see some kind of capital controls limiting the access of China to U.S. money at some point in the future. This is huge, and it's impossible to understate how big it would be. It's not something that's going to happen this week, but it's something I'm going to be keeping my eye on. My thanks to Ben Levison. Be sure to catch Ben alongside Jack Otter and other Barron's journalists on Barron's Roundtable every Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern on Fox Business. All right, moving along, as the U.S. confronts the challenges of reopening the nation, our next guest is right in the thick of it. Andy Wiederhorn serves as president and CEO of Fat Brands, which operates 374 restaurants across eight chains, including Fat Burger, Buffalo's Cafe, and Buffalo's Express. Andy recently spoke with me about the best approach to ensuring safety while also helping workers get back on the job. Watch this. The number one thing is going to be the safety of the employees. You have, they have to want to come to work and feel safe. So we've already shipped to all of our restaurants, PPE, the masks, the shields, gloves, sanitizer, all those things uh, to make sure that the franchisees are ready when they're allowed to reopen for in restaurant dining. They've already been open for it to go in delivery. And then we have to make that, that stuff available for guests if they come in in terms of, uh, of course, segregated seating. So you have some spacing there. And we're taking advantage of the warm weather and the summer months coming up. So a lot of our restaurants in the South have outdoor patios. They have screen porches. So customers can sit outside and feel a little bit more comfortable. We've moved the bars outside. Um, everything like that that we can do to make guests feel comfortable as well. But let's face it, I mean, how are you going to eat with a mask on? You have to be able to take it off to eat or drink. And so you really have to be distancing yourself. And I, so I think we'll see more to-go business than usual for the summer. If you can't fill them to capacity, do you have to raise prices to make up for it? Prices are going up for multiple reasons. We have all kinds of disruption in the supply chain for food for all, all operators. Uh, we've been pretty lucky, but it's out there. Number two, the shift to more delivery and to-go packaging and, and del delivery services costs more. So that's going to get passed on to the customer either in a delivery fee or, or some other way. The operator doesn't have the margin to absorb it. So Prices will be affected by this 100%, and it couldn't really come at a worse time because what consumer wants to spend even more money right now, you know, when they're worried about their jobs and, and, their, you know, and, and how much they're making? Are you concerned that when these restaurants are able to be reopened that people maybe got a little too used to takeout or maybe a little too used to cooking themselves versus dining out? Look, um, there's, there's concerns about everything. Uh, I think that all of the adjustments that we've all been forced to make to for safety reasons are overrated in a sense that people are not going to want to work from home 100% of the time. They're not going to want to eat and cook at home 100% of the time. Um, they've learned about delivery and to-go food more than ever before now. And I think uh, there'll be a nice balance. So, and again, until there's a vaccine that's out there that people can rely upon, consumer behavior is going to be cautious. And so we have to have a very, very heavy emphasis on cleanliness and safety of employees, safety of customers, and make sure that to display that and communicate that so that you don't, you can't take for granted that a customer is going to feel comfortable, even if you're doing all those things behind the scenes. You need to let them know you're doing those things. You need to let your employees know you're doing those things. My thanks to Andy Wiederhorn, president and CEO of Fat Brands. 
Let's shift to a preview of the week ahead. Starting on Monday, the World Health Organization holds its 73rd World Health Assembly. Plus, we'll get key data reports, including housing starts, existing home sales, and leading indicators for April. On the earnings calendar, major companies reporting this week include Home Depot and Walmart on Tuesday, Lowe's and Target on Wednesday, Best Buy and NVIDIA on Thursday, and then Alibaba and Deer on Friday. Speaking of Home Depot, my next guest says now is the time to own the home improvement retailer alongside other consumer discretionary stocks. Here to discuss why is Justin Kelly, CEO and CIO of Winslow Capital. Justin, appreciate you being here. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for having me, Caroline. I'm excited to chat with you today. All right, so we're talking about portfolio opportunities. Let's start with consumer discretionary. Why are you bullish? Sure, consumer discretionary is one of three sectors that we like longer term. Uh, we believe that U.S. large cap growth stocks will continue to dominate the U.S. markets and be the leading category. So within consumer discretionary, we really like companies that are positively leveraged to the e-commerce theme. So companies that have already retooled their business for the digital revolution are really advantaged. And it's really the larger companies, like you mentioned, Home Depot, uh, Amazon, Chipotle, Nike, who are on the front foot of innovation and modernizing their business for the digital world. Uh, they, as larger companies, can spread their digital investments over a larger customer base and frankly, really distance themselves versus their competition. So you mentioned three sectors, the other two, tech and healthcare. Why do you like those and what are your company picks? Sure, it's companies that are on the front foot of innovation and the shift to the digital economy. So within technology, we like the three cloud computing players, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon. We also like the uh, software as a service and the payment companies. So Salesforce.com, Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, and within healthcare, um, in the last one year, we've been buying many of the biopharmaceutical companies because there's been a big uptick in innovation there. So Eli Lilly, Biomarin, which is an off the beaten path name, AstraZeneca, uh, Zoetis are, are good examples. These are the companies that are producing uh, very large amounts of free cash flow. And in a slow growth world, they can take that free cash flow and augment their core operating income through buybacks or dividends or making a creative acquisitions. Think about how Microsoft bought LinkedIn, uh, which is still growing quite rapidly for them. Uh, and they did it really just through their own internal cash generation. We'll leave it there. Justin Kelly, really appreciate you joining us. Thanks so much for your insights. Yeah, thank you, Caroline. Have a great day. That concludes today's market brief. As always, stay safe, take care. I'm Caroline Woods. Thanks so much for watching.